Hi everyone, welcome to my presentation on debugging the Linux kernel. This is part one of a three-part series, um, and in this part one, it's basically doing the, uh, the setup work for the, the, the other two parts. So today we're going to um, get a custom kernel up and running in Fedora, specifically Fedora 32. So the goal of this three-part series is to um, set up a custom kernel running in Fedora 32, to use SizeCaller to um, run SizeCaller on that Fedora machine running the custom kernel, and find a bug using the SizeCaller application. And then in part three, we will GDB into the kernel and uh, find out where that bug is occurring. So this is part one. Um, in today's presentation, um, what we're going to do is install Fedora 32 server or workstation um, inside of QE QEMU. Um, I am going to use the workstation edition today because I've previously done the, the server edition on my own. Um, and I want to shake it up and do something new. Um, so after we get Fedora 32 uh, up and running in QMU, we're going to get the kernel. Uh, we're going to configure it, um, and then we're going to make it um, so that it will run in our system. Uh, after that, we will get the init RAMFS from the running Fedora 32 system um, without our custom kernel. And then after that, we will use that init RAMFS with our custom kernel to run Fedora 32 um, in that scenario. So before we begin, there is a QM, QEMU script that I have that makes uh, running it a whole lot easier. Um, if you do a wget from this site, uh, from my GitHub account, you will grab the run sh script um, and uh, it makes things a whole lot easier. Uh, before you actually run a command, you can do a dash dash fake with it to see what the actual QEMU command is that will be run. And I'll, I'll show you that in, uh, in the, the presentation. So let's get Fedora 32. And this should actually say Fedora 32 Workstation Edition. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Fedora. So let's do a, a Google search for Fedora. Click on the first link and we want to get the workstation edition today. So I'm going to click on the download edition and I just want the ISO file. So I'm going to right click on the download. I'm going to copy link location and then in a directory that I've set up to do all this work called kernel debug, I am going to wget the, uh, the, um, the ISO that we have, the link to the ISO. Uh, that we have in the uh, the clipboard. So this is going to take a few minutes. So while that's happening, what we want to do is set up uh, um, a QEMU partition. Um, now this is just a file that we will pretend is Fedora's hard drive. And the way we do that is through QEMU-image. Um, QEMU-image create dash F, F uh, QCOW2 um, and then we're going to give it a location um, where it's going to be created. So let's do that while we're downloading. So let's make a directory called Fedora Desktop. And then inside of that, we will do QEMU image. And what was the command again? Create, create dash F Q cow two. And we're going to put it in Fedora Desktop, and we're going to call it Fedora.img. We're going to give it 20 gigabytes of space. So it's all done. Um, let's take a look at our Fedora Desktop directory, and you will see that we've got a file of, oh, it's not 20 gigabytes of space, but I guess it just grows as you use it. So we're almost done downloading the uh, downloading this the um, the ISO, and when we are done, we will fire up uh, Q QEMU and start installing onto that Fedora image. All 
All right, so um, in the script that I have, what we will do is we will run and then we will run Fedora desktop fedora.image um, with a CD-ROM of Fedora Workstation Live. Oh, and we have bugs. What is the bug? All right, sorry about that. There was a, I had a little bug in my run script. So let's give it a run now. And we want to start Fedora Workstation 32 Live. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move this, move these around such that The Pop! OS uh, tiling isn't being so nice right now. So let's turn that off and get this, get this bigger. So it's right on the screen where you can see it. We're just booting up. And you can, you can see the command that was run here. Um, if I stretch this out, um, this is the command that was run. So it was QEMU system x86-64, enable KVM, uh, serial uh, studio, uh, sound hardware is HDA, HDA is the uh, um, Fedora image that we created with the, uh, the QEMU image command. Our CD-ROM is the Fedora workstation. Then I've set up a, a method to do um, SSH, if we were going to use SSH during the install. Um, I've given it eight gigabytes of RAM and I've given it eight um, symmetrical multiprocessing units. So it's, it's got eight cores. It thinks it's got eight, eight cores. So let's install it to the hard drive. Seems to be taking its time here. What's going on? Installed a hard drive. It's a little slow because OBS takes up a lot of resources um, on my my little nuck here. So it's chugging along as fast as it can. So inside of the ins installation uh, destination, we're going to pick that QEMU hard drive that we created. Come on, little machine. And we will begin our installation. Now, while the, um, the installation is occurring, what we can do is we can also start grabbing our Linux kernel. So, let me move this on over here and move you down here. In fact, I'm going to turn tiling back on. Hopefully this doesn't break everything. Ooh. All right, that's not so nice. Let's uh, fix this up. Okay. Uh, it's all right. So what we're going to do is find the uh, the kernel. So if we go to kernel.org and we're going to pick the, the light, latest stable edition. So we want to browse and then go down to the go to the summary. Go down to the clone command. So we're going to grab this and put it into our clipboard and then we will git clone and we're going to put this into mainline. Um, and the reason I put it into mainline is because sometimes I want to have multiple, um, multiple running, uh, multiple kernels to be able to bounce between. And check on our progress here. So what we're doing right now is we are cloning the, uh, the kernel. 
Um, after that, we're going to link it because we called it mainline, but we want it to be Linux um, because that's how uh, my running script knows where to look for a, um, a completed um, kernel. So after that, we're going to uh, make Mr. Proper, um, make clean and make x86 def config, x86 64 def config. Um, and then we're going to turn a few more things on that we need to um, not only be able to run Fedora, because there's some things that are not in the x86 64 def config that Fedora needs. Um, we also want to turn on some debugging things because um, the end result of this of this um, of these three part of this three part presentation is to be able to de to debug the kernel um, and show you how to how to do that sort of things. So let's go back, see how our progress is going. It's going quite slow. We've uh, I'm really maxing out the uh, the cores here, as you can see in a. In HTOP, I'm really maxing out my system at the moment with uh, OBS is taking up quite a bit of the CPU. All right, it looks like we have finally finished the uh, the installation of Fedora 32 inside of our Q QEMU. So we're going to finish the installation. And then we are going to shut the machine down. All right, so the next step is just to ensure that our installation went um, correctly. So we're going to run the um, the, the system that we just created uh, on its own without the CD-ROM installed. So we're going to do that by running run and then Fedora desktop and the Fedora image that we just created and that is all. And we will complete the setup by clicking next. Just keep clicking next and my username will just be my initials. That's what I like to use inside of um, throwaway machines. And I will give it a very complicated password. And we will start using Fedora. Check out Fedora here. Don't be dismayed by how slow this is going on my machine. Um, my NUC does not have a very good graphical subsystem. So that means that uh, OBS uses my CPUs to do um, its capturing and rendering rather than using the GPU, which slows my entire machine down. Um, I will gladly take hardware donations if anyone would like to uh, to send me some. So we've got a uh, Firefox up and running here. Everything's good there. Let us see if we have uh, the ability to SSH into the machine. So I would like to. SSH into localhost uh, port 2222. And the reason why I'm using that is that uh, that's what this command does for me. It says um, port forward from my host machines 2222 to the target machines um, port 22. So, and I am the user MM. 
does not appear that we have SSH at the moment. I would like to have SSH though, so let's find the terminal and Right, do we have it now? I use my port 2222 for all, um, all QEMU, QEMU machines here. So we've got to get rid of the previous key gen and then we will log in and we are on the Fedora machine inside of SSH. All right, and conveniently our um, our kernel has just downloaded. So let me exit out of this um, Fedora machine on QEMU. And we will get into doing things with the kernel. So what we want to do is soft link that main line, the, uh, the source that we downloaded into Linux. And so we've got Linux pointing to mainline now. And the reason why I do that is because um, my dash K option looks inside of Linux Arch x86 boot BZ image to find its kernel once the, uh, the kernel has been compiled. Now, of course, uh, Arch x86 boot does not have BZ image yet. Um, and we've got to create that for ourselves. So let's go ahead and start creating that for ourselves. So the commands that we want to do are uh, make Mr. Proper, make clean, make x86-64 def config, and then we're gonna do some stuff with our menu config. So, Mr. Proper, make clean, make x86-64 def config. All right, and then we will go into the menu config. So the first thing that I do in order to make life easier and not have to worry about, um, uh, not have to worry about modules and thus be able to use a pre-existing init RAMFS is I like to turn off module support. The second thing that you have to do is that Fedora uses XFS as the root file system. So what we've got to do is go into file systems and enable XFS. Um, now, what we're gonna do is turn on some kernel hacking um, options as well, because like I said, the purpose of this exercise is to get us ready to do a size, um, size caller and GDB into the kernel once we have found a bug with size color. So we will turn on um, compile the kernel with debug info. Um, we don't need any of the new options that have just popped up. We're going to, actually we need to do, I always lose the, uh, the KCOV. Uh, um, option. So I might have to to search around for KCOV because it, it's not labeled as well as I like it to be labeled. So we don't need any of that. Uh, in memory debugging, we want this debug VM and we'll get everything from there. And we do want KSAN and we'll get inline instrumentation for KSAN. Okay. Now, where was KCOV? I keep forgetting where KCOV is supposed to be. You will have to bear with me. All 
we want the fault injecting uh, in, uh, injection framework and we're going to turn all of that stuff on and then this is the kcov um, option that that i always have a trouble finding so if we look in help we will say see that it is config kcov um, and it allows us to do um, coverage guided fuzzing with the uh, on the kernel and that means that it will allow size killer um, to do its thing so we've got that selected and might as well select that other option as well um, now you can you can put in some some other stuff uh, notifier error injection i'm not quite sure what that is i'm not going to turn it on but you can turn on a bunch of other stuff in here um, in fact let's go in and turn on the memory leak detector um, we will keep it on by default and we will exit out that will have created us a dot config file so i'm going to take that dot config file and save it somewhere so copy dot config to i've got an area where i keep my configs and i'm going to call this the fedora desktop config all right and now I am going to go ahead and I am going to make this kernel using the command make j and we'll, we will pass in to the j option our nproc. nproc is the number of processors on your, um, your machine right now. So if I run nproc, you will see that I, my, my little nuck here is a four core eight threaded machine. So make dash j and proc and I am going to uh, run this and pause the video because um, the amount of time that th this is going to take me um, while I'm running OBS is going to be significant so um, I will see you in a few minutes and you will see me in a matter of milliseconds all right so we're just about finished compiling the kernel um, it took a lot longer than it normally does for me. Um, I'm going to be saving up to get myself one of those System76 Thaleos because those things are sweet. And I really want one of those. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, we're just about finished. We're creating our VM Linux and we should have our BZ image in a few moments. Come on, little machine. You can finish up that last bit of a uh, that last bit of a uh, compression. All right, so um, now I want to run uh, I want to run my Fedora Q, uh, QAMU image um, with this kernel without grabbing the the init ramfs to show you what happens um, if you don't have the init, init ramfs. So in order to do that, I will um, run my run script with the Fedora desktop Fedora image. And I will say, please include the kernel. And I'm also going to have no display on this one so that we can see um, more uh, D message logs, print K logs uh, inside of this, this window here. So let's give it a go. And we've got a kernel panic. And that's because um, it can't find an init, um, an init program to start up. So what happens uh, on Fedora, and um, this is different from uh, different operating systems, like you can create Arch such that you don't need an init RAMFS. 
However, on Fedora, um, Fedora needs that init RAMFS to start up its first system D. Um, and that first system D will mount the hard drive, um, the rest of the hard drive. Um, it will mount the rest of the hard drive, uh, including the init, um, the slash init or slash sbin slash init application so that we can go through the full um, initialization and boot up process. But because we don't have the init, um, the init RAMFS, um, the kernel can't find the init program, therefore it's just gonna, it's just gonna panic and stop here. So we need to grab an init RAMFS. Now, because we created our kernel with no, um, no module support, we can grab an init RAMFS that already exists um, from the Fedora image. So let's start up the Fedora image again. Um, again, I will have no, no display and because I just want to um, boot up into a command line and then be able to SSH. So let's start that up and get ourselves ready to grab an init RAMFS. So in this bottom window, I am going to go into the Fedora desktop directory and wait until we have a system up and running. Uh, we won't, I won't be able to tell um, because I'm not running my own kernel, so I don't get a, I don't get a bunch of prints and ready statements. So I just have to give it a try. system up yet all right this has taken a bit too long so I'm gonna stop this process and start it up again with uh, a user with a, a graphical user interface Okay, we're up and running. I should be able should be able to SSH in. No, okay. So there is. Uh, I did not. I forgot to do one thing, um, as we did our first uh, startup of the Fedora image. So I will correct correct that by doing. sudo system control enable sshd so that will mean that uh, every reboot it's going to start up the ssh server so we are in ssh on the machine now and um, the reason why i did that is because we need to grab that uh, init ramfs file so the way that i suggest that you do that is to copy the init ramfs from the slash boot directory into your user's home directory and then use scp to copy it to the host's hard drive so what we're going to do is sudo copy slash boot and we will use the um, init ramfs for init ramfs 5.66300 so we will copy in ramfs 5.66 into my users area. I'm then going to shown it to my users um, to be owned by my user. And then I will group it. And I'm also going to change the name to init ramfs image All right and then we will inside of this fedora desktop area i'm going to scp it from local host and it's in home slash mm slash init ram fs dot image to here And I need to say that my user is mm.
All right, we have it. And we will shut down our uh, Fedora machine again. sudo shut down now dash h. And this time we're going to boot it up using our kernel, the kernel that I just compiled, and the initramfs that I just grabbed from the, um, the running system. So to do that, we will run um, Fedora Desktop, Fedora, and make sure that we grab a kernel, and then say that the initramfs is at Fedora Desktop, and it is in it ramfs and we don't want that display um, now again something bad will happen here but i just want to show this to you so that you're when you're running this stuff at home when you're following along um, you're prepared for the errors that you might receive init ramfs is starting it's doing all our stuff and it is it failed now why did it fail it failed because it couldn't do this sysroot change now the reason why it couldn't do this sysroot change is because fedora uses um the logical volume manager lvm um to do its uh, root file system. It hosts its uh, root file system on LVM. Um, and we did not tell our kernel um, that we are that it needs to, to use LVM in order to mount that, um, that, that partition, that LVM uh, root file system. So we, uh, we, we are in um, a somewhat working system. So I, I am in root here. I've got commands like ls. Um, I can go into seeing all the stuff that is inside of the root, the init ramfs um, file system. So we can still play, but but it's it's not the full Fedora that we want. So we want to quit this. And again, we want to run our real fedora because i want to show you how you get the information on how to properly boot um, with that uh, um, the the root file system on lvm um, and that is information that you can find in the running system so we've got our fedora up and running here let's move that over and get into ssh So what I want to show you is how um, Fedora knows how to use um, LVM to mount that uh, root file system. Um, so the, the boot process, um, after we go through UEFI, we go into the bootloader. And the bootloader that Fedora installs is called Grub2. Um, Grub2 has a config file inside of the boot directory. And we need to be root to be able to look around in there. So boot grub2. There is a file called grubcfg. So let's take a look at grubcfg. Oh, we don't have them on the machine yet. So actually, let's, let's do a DNF install of them. Because that would be good to have. Yes, there and download it. All right. 
So let's take a look at that grub config. And we're going to go down to the entry that will boot up Fedora here. So where is that command? I know it's in here. Here it is. This is what we're looking for, the kernel ops inside of the boot, um, the, the grub config. So it is saying that root is equal to dev mapper fedora local host dash live root um, dash ro. Actually, I don't think that's the right one. We're looking for Fedora root. Not found. Okay. Interesting. This is different from the, uh, the Fedora server edition that I've used before. So what I want to do is I'm going to comment out. I'm actually just going to set up a different entry inside of my run.sh script called C. No, I can't call it CD for CD-ROM. Let's call it... Um, uh, CFD or Fedora desktop and we will say that the command line plus equals this information and we're going to edit out some of the stuff because we don't need it all. So we don't want quiet. We don't need this RHGB. Uh, we don't need the swap partition. All right. So we've got a um, we've got what we need to put into the kernel command line in order to. Um, tell the kernel to use the um, the proper root file system um, after um, after init rd uh, after init ramfs starts up so i will save that and get out of this and i am going to shut down the machine And we will run with our kernel with the init and with the init ramfs that we grabbed and with cfd um, without a display. So cross your fingers, everyone. Uh, let's let's hope this goes well. Let's hope we get a boot up and we get a command prompt. If not, I'm going to have to do a little bit of debugging here because this is different from the Fedora server that I uh, I did uh, the dress rehearsal for the video on. It looks like it has worked for us. Famous last words. We're not at a command prompt yet, Mike. The reason why you see all these fails is because we didn't have the... Uh, we didn't allow uh, kernel modules to be inserted into our kernel. Um, we don't need it. We don't need all this stuff. So I don't particularly care. We are, um, all those modules are compiled by Fedora. Um, 
and, and we just don't need them in order to get ourselves to a command prompt. So let us log in. And let's do a uname a, not a unamer, a uname. Uname dash a. Wow, this machine is really slow. Come on, buddy. Let's SSH in. Hopefully we can. You name dash A, and you will see that it is the kernel that we compiled ourselves rather than Fedora's kernel. Um, I'm not sure why it says 5.70 plus when we grab the uh, the 5.72 um, kernel from kernel.org, but this is our kernel. So uh, I will show you the last slide. Victory! Victory is ours. So we're running uh, Fedora with our custom kernel, and we're now ready to start um, firing up size killer in order to find bugs. Um, which we will then be able to, um, if not fix, at least identify what's going on with them. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've learned something about um, QEMU and Linux. And uh, have a nice day or afternoon or evening.